Okay. Yes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we can ask the steering committee to uh, join the honourable member. Thank you for your space. Uh, we will start now. The Maritime Travellers Rights Steering Committee, commissioners, uh, senior government officials, vessel operators, uh, boat owners, and maritime stakeholders, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, and a very good morning to all of you. I understand there are a few people still on their way from Singapore, so we should have a few more in attendance today. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to be here this morning to officially launch our first uh, of a series of Maritime Travelers' Rights Public Consultation, uh, as first one in the Western Division. I'd like to begin by, by thanking the Maritime Travelers' Rights Steering Committee and the vessel operators, the passengers, the businesses, and all the stakeholders for their active participation, support, and dedication to our maritime sector. Ladies and gentlemen, there are around 10 million people and about 25,000 islands that are scattered across 4.8 square kilometers of the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific region is undoubtedly amongst the, the most dependent on the sea as a means of transport in the world. And we are an island nation of more than 300 islands, which are scattered over 1.3 uh, million square kilometers of ocean. We are a transshipment hub of the Pacific, connecting other small island states uh, uh, to the rest of the world. And our main connectivity for passengers and cargo is actually by maritime transport. Most, if not all of us, uh, here today have actually traveled by sea whether on a private vessel or a, or a government, uh, government vessel. And not just us, but our entire population has actually used uh, the sea for, for purposes of travel at, any, at some given time. In fact, some travel almost every week, and that's how important maritime transportation is to all of us. We must also not forget that our maritime regions are entirely dependent on the reliable and and safe transportation of passengers and goods. And the economy in these islands is actually affected when the service is not provided on time and when the vessel operators actually refuse to carry products. And we all know uh, there's so many things that we can do better. And this is one of the reasons why we're actually here today. So while we acknowledge the work of the maritime uh, stakeholders and services they provide, the rights of our travelers also need equal attention. So in an effort to improve services uh, in our maritime sector and recognizing the actual growing fundamental rights of maritime travelers, the Indian government is strengthening efforts to provide safe, efficient, reliable, and affordable shipping services. Well, we are actually taking measures to ensure the, the right of every person to have reasonable access to transportation we must, because this is everybody's constitutional right. This year, the Ministry is actually working on establishing the national policy and on, on maritime travelers' rights. With the national policy on maritime travelers' rights, uh, what we want to achieve is a balance between the service provider and also the traveler. These service providers are able to compete in an environment that is regulated, and so the travelers also need a mechanism that will give them protection. And also, a redress mechanism when, when there are delays or cancellation of trips by the vessel operator, for example. The policy, ladies and gentlemen, will, will establish a, a, a minimum set of rights for passengers traveling by sea and inland waters and requires carriers to provide assistance in the event of cancelled or delayed departures. The policy will also provide persons with, uh, with disabilities the same rights as anyone else maritime services. In this way, we are making the move to create a more considerate and a more supportive travel environment. The Ministry studied and, and benchmarked a few jurisdictions like the European Union who have adopted regulations uh, to confirm rights to passengers when traveling by sea and inland waterways. We are also looking at, the, uh, at its application in Australia and New Zealand. Ladies and gentlemen, there are, there are three major components of a maritime traveler's rights policy. The passengers uh, on board the vessel, the cargo, and the, and the vehicles on board the vessel. 
and through this consultation we actually want to hear from you uh, on your perspective on, on maritime travel and what needs to be improved and wh what needs to be done and uh, what, you are, what, what, you, what you understand as being important to be included as travellers' rights. And I'm happy to see the tourism sector well represented. Good to see you there. Fantastic. Your input is actually critical in making this national policy inclusive and robust and a policy that is there for the, for the long term and uh, it actually provides for the guidance for the development of appropriate legal framework also to protect all travellers. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not doing this alone and our partners in this process are our key industry stakeholders the Maritime Travelers' Rights Steering Committee, which comprises of the Ministry of Rural and Maritime Development uh, and Disaster Management, the Fijian Competition Consumer Commission, the Consumer Council of Fiji, Maritime Safety Authority of Fiji, Fiji Ports uh, Corporation Limited, Office of the Solicitor General, and of course our Navy. We've undertaken uh, consultations on board our franchise engaged vessels and with Fijians in the Maritime Islands. And these are communities and, and villages along our government shipping uh, franchise routes, which covers about 80 ports. Conto consultations also have been concluded in, in Nadula village, in, in the Yasawas, in the islands of uh, Vanuatu, Nayao, and Nakemba in Lao, and the villages of Nalele, uh, Nangelelebu, Tawake, Wainia, Wainihika, Nikondi, Nambuono, Nawaro in the northeast, Vanuatu, just to name a few. Ladies and gentlemen, today's consultation is actually to build the momentum and it ensures that this policy is inclusive and reflective of practical solutions and, and solutions that actually make an impact. Steering a ship is a complete task, a very complex task, which requires perception, actually requires appropriate judgment, requires adequate response time and, and physical capability. It is therefore our shared responsibility to ensure that seafarers, along with governing authorities, contribute to the foundation of safe transportation uh, for all Fijians. Yesterday we had opened an MSAF office in, in Delba, where I did mention about the stats in terms of mishaps at sea. And this we most definitely want to avoid. Ladies and gentlemen, and I as the Ambassador for Maritime Safety and under the leadership of our Honourable Prime Minister will ensure that maritime safety is actually given the attention and resources it's needed. Safety is everyone's responsibility and no matter where we go, no matter what we do and what we travel in, uh, that is actually paramount. So I trust everyone present here today to actively participate in this consultation as we develop uh, Fiji's National Maritime Travelers' Rights Policy. Ladies and gentlemen, the Fijian government, you should all know, remains committed to ensuring services remain available to maritime communities as an integral component of our economic recovery and development. And to everyone here today, I encourage your active participation and valuable contribution uh, to the consultations today. So with those few words, I officially open the Maritime Travelers' Rights Consultation. Thank you very much. Now I tea break, uh, and then we will start uh, the steering committee to join the Honorable Minister.